Most of this week's questions are going to have relatively short answers, so I've decided to answer two questions for each evolution. But before we do that, I just want to talk about Pokemon Go for Apple Watch. A story surfaced yesterday claiming that Niantic had cancelled development on Pokemon Go for Apple Watch, and that's just not true. Niantic actually had to take to Twitter with the Pokemon Go account to reassure people that Pokemon Go for Apple Watch is still coming. Now we don't have a date, there's no timeline on that. I know during the Apple keynote they said it would be out before the end of the year. That doesn't seem likely anymore, but at least we know that development is still continuing and that Pokemon Go for Apple Watch is coming eventually. No official word on Pokemon Go for Android Wear, but in an interview a couple months ago, John Hankey said it's very likely that it'll happen. And from the way that he said it, from the way that he answered the question, I think that there is development happening for Pokemon Go on Android Wear currently, but they probably have a contract with Apple that gives them exclusive rights to the first release of Pokemon Go for a smartwatch. So Pokemon Go for Apple Watch, definitely coming. Pokemon Go for Android Wear, most likely coming soon after that. Now, first things first, it's the thing I always forget. And let's evolve some Pokemon. I'll start with Paris, just because I've evolved so many of them already. You know what I'm looking for, it's Bug Bite Solar Beam, or Bug Bite X Scissor, because that's the best moveset to use against Executor. But I really want Bug Bite Solar Beam. Bug Bite X Scissor, okay, I'll take it. I actually only have one Parasect with Bug Bite X Scissor right now, so this is good for me. First question, when will we be able to request new Pokestops and Gyms? Probably not for a very long time. Niantic has a very big backlog of submitted requests for Ingress Portals or Pokestops or Gyms, and they've finally done something to start going through them. So recently they announced something called Operation Portal Recon, which essentially is an invite-only portal or Pokestop screening process that's open to high-level Ingress players. These are people who have been playing Ingress for a long time and should theoretically know what makes a good portal or, in turn, a good Pokestop. So right now, there should be people going through all these submissions that have piled up, deciding which ones will actually make it into the game's Ingress or Pokemon Go. And since it's invite only, there's no way to apply to this program, but I will say, Niantic, I have a pretty good idea of what a Pokestop should be. So, if you got any invites left. Let's do Drowsy, because that's not exciting for a lot of you. But I'm still looking for a Hypno with Confusion and Psychic, or Zen Headbutt and Psychic. Oh wait, I was going to answer two questions. Alright, we'll do three after this one. Confusion, Psy Shock. I think that's what I've been getting on most of my Hypno evolutions. Here's something that came up quite a bit. What do I think of the What Will Hatch tweet and Facebook post that Niantic made? It was just a gif or a short video of a 5 kilometer egg hatching, and then it cuts off before you see the Pokemon and says, What Will Hatch? I don't think that there's anything to that. I don't think that they're teasing anything new. I think that's more of just a way of them trying to engage with the player base the same way they do Max CP Monday or whatever else they do on Twitter. Are nests only located in parks where the grass in the game is dark green? No, they're not, actually. The map in Pokemon Go is a skinned version of Google Maps, so anything that is green on Google Maps will appear dark green in Pokemon Go. But nests can appear in parks that aren't green on Google Maps. For example, Southgate Park is a nest that I've been to many times on the channel, but if you look on Google Maps, it's not green. It seems like potential parks for nests are more likely determined using open street maps, which is sort of like an open version of Google Maps. It's like the Wikipedia of Google Maps that lets people contribute their own information to the map database. I have a whole video explaining how you can use an open street maps query to find potential nest parks near you. So if you want to check that out, it's right up here. Speaking of recommended videos, here's another question. As a newer viewer of the channel, which older videos would I recommend? I actually have playlists on the channel page that have what I consider to be the best tips, the most essential tips for beginners, intermediate, and advanced players. So for beginners, that's going to be people who are just picking up the game, who have no familiarity with Pokemon Go, 
or Pokemon in general. The intermediate tips are for people who understand the basics and now want to improve what you can do within the visible spectrum in the game. And then the advanced tips go into things that are more, well, advanced, stuff that's sort of hidden, like IVs, base stats, catch rate mechanics, things like that, that the game doesn't make very obvious to you. And I try to update those playlists as I make new videos, so if I talk about something that I think is important for people to know, I'll add it to that playlist. So if you're new to the channel, definitely start with those playlists. They're on the channel page, but I'll also put the links in the description. Okay, that's three. I'm actually, these last, what is that, six? I'm really excited to evolve all of them. Um, I'll do Seal, just because Dugong got nerfed and uh, doesn't have the same effect that it would have had a month ago. I'm hoping for Frost Breath and Blizzard on this one. I already have one with Ice Shard Blizzard, but it doesn't have good IVs. So if I could power this one up, that would be great. Nope. Actually, I wouldn't even need to power it up. 1055 CP is perfect for training. So if I could get a Dugong with Frost Breath Blizzard at that CP, that would be perfect. What map or app can be used to find Pokestops? There's actually a website called PokemonGoMap.info that has a pretty up-to-date database of Pokestop locations. It says currently there are 4,158,564 Pokestops and gyms on this map. So that's kind of a lot. And of course the link for that will also be in the description. What do you prefer? A Pokemon with good IVs but bad moveset or bad IVs and good moveset? Given the choice, I would always take the Pokemon with the good moveset and bad IVs. Assuming they're the same level, there's not going to be a huge difference in their CP and their stats, but having the best moveset is going to make a pretty significant difference over having a bad moveset. For a lot of Pokemon, having a bad moveset makes them almost unusable, very low DPS, horrible type coverage, no stab bonus, but having bad IVs means that their stats are only about 10% lower. I have an entire video that explains IVs, CP, and moveset, how they interact, and when each one is most important, so you can check that out here, and I think that's also on the advanced tips playlist. I'll do Rhyhorn next. This is going to make a really strong Rhydon. It's 1276 CP to start with, and has good IVs. I'm probably not going to power it up, but it'll make another high CP Pokemon just to place in gyms for better gym placement. I already have my perfect IV ride on, and then a couple with good move sets, so we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Mudslap Megahorn. Not a great move set, but 2500 CP, that probably puts it in my top 5. What Pokemon in Gen 2 do you think will shake up the gym metagame the most? By far, by far it will be Blissey. Blissey is the evolved form of Chansey, and as you know, Chansey is already the hardest Pokemon to beat in a gym in terms of just the amount of time it takes, because Chansey has the highest max HP of any Pokemon in the game. Chansey's CP, fortunately, currently, is not very high, meaning it doesn't get very good gym placement, and therefore doesn't get placed in very many gyms. But Blissey is going to have even more, slightly more, max HP than Chansey does, but Blissey is going to have 3,219 maximum CP. It's the sixth highest CP of any non-legendary Pokemon in first and second generation. So Blissey is going to get good gym placement, and it's going to take a very long time to beat it. So a gym Currently, a gym full of Chanseys is probably your best bet at keeping a gym, just because of the amount of time that it's going to take someone to beat it. But with Blissey having so much higher max CP than Chansey, it means you're probably going to start seeing a lot more Blisseys in gyms than you currently see Chanseys. So yeah, Blissey. I'm actually kind of worried about it. There's a lot of potential for stalling strategies in gyms with Blissey, and even now with Chansey. So if you have a full team that you do gym runs with, just try to put all Chanseys in the gym and it'll last longer than any other Pokemon in there. This is something that gets asked a lot, and it's whether or not IVs affect catch rate. Currently, there's no evidence to support that. Catch rate is really just based on the Pokemon's level, its base catch rate, and then your modifiers from which Pokeball you use, Raspberry, your Metal bonuses, Curveball, Throw bonus. But there's nothing to suggest that a Pokemon with higher IVs would be harder to catch than a Pokemon with lower IVs. How about... 
It's been a while, I think, since I evolved a Growlithe. I'm still waiting for an Arcanine with Fire Fang and Fire Blast, because I do want to start testing out the best attackers of each type, and comparing them and seeing how they perform in real-world gym battles rather than just looking at DPS alone. So hopefully Fire Fang, Fire Blast, Bite Fire Blast, I already have that. What CP should we look for for 100% IV Pokemon hatching from eggs? There's a chart on Game Press. The link is in the description. The chart's probably right here. Probably. It's definitely there. I get to choose whether or not it's there, so it's there. But if you want to download the chart for yourself to have as quick reference on your phone, the link is in the description. Apparently you've been asking for weeks, do you think we'll ever get customization like Sun and Moon on 3DS? This refers to avatar or trainer customization, and the answer is yes. It was actually found in the game data that there is code for more customization coming. There's code for in-app purchases and unlockable items for avatar customization in all the categories that we already know, so hat, hair, eyes, jacket, pants, you know, all that stuff that you can change currently. There will be more coming eventually, and it sounds like there will be some items that you can buy with coins, and others that will be unlocked through actions that you perform in the game. That was two, right? Okay, uh, only two evolutions, three evolutions left. Let's do Execute. Again, I'm hoping for Zen Headbutt Solar Beam. I still don't have it. I think I have one. Oh no, I do have one with Zen Headbutt Solar Beam, but it doesn't have good IVs. So if I could get one to power up, that would be ideal. Nice. Zen Headbutt Solar Beam on an Executor with good IVs is something I've been waiting for for months. It's unfortunate that Executor was recently nerfed a little bit, but I'm still happy about it. Any ideas on how Tyrogue will be implemented in Pokemon Go? It seems like Niantic's having trouble figuring it out. I don't think they're having trouble, I think they're just holding off for the next wave of second generation releases, which since a lot of you asked, will probably most likely be the Pokemon that evolve from first generation Pokemon. That would include Espeon, Umbreon, Politoed. We've talked about them enough times before, but that's my prediction for what the next wave would be. I'm still hopeful that they just decide to drop them all, but... But as for Tyrogue, I suggested the first time that I talked about Tyrogue in a video that its evolution would be based on its IVs, because in the main series games, Tyrogue evolves to Hitmonchan if its defense is higher than its attack at level 20, Hitmonlee if its attack is higher than its defense, and Hitmontop if its attack and defense are equal at level 20. Now obviously we don't get to see a Pokemon's stats in Pokemon Go, but we can learn about its IVs from the appraisal system. So, if a Tyrogue had attack as its highest IV, it could evolve into Hitmonlee. If it had defense as its highest IV, it would evolve into Hitmonchan. And if its attack and defense IVs were equal, it would evolve into Hitmontop. And that way you could use the appraisal system to know which of that Tyrogue's IVs are highest, and then in turn, know which of its evolutions you're gonna get. The one problem would be that every perfect IV Tyrogue would then evolve into Hitmontop, because its attack and defense would be equal at 15. So maybe they could change it slightly, so that if its HP is the highest, it would evolve into Hitmontop, and that way, when all three IVs are equal, you would just get a random evolution. My camera stopped recording at some point while I was answering that question, and I went on for actually a little while because there was no indication that it stopped recording. Thank you, Sony. I don't think I answered this question yet, but was Ditto the big secret that Pokemon Go was hiding? I don't think that it was, because Ditto started appearing and then everyone started catching it. It's not like Ditto was super rare and it was hiding in the game for a week before anyone found it, so I think Niantic just made Ditto available and that started appearing, and the secret is something that, as far as I know, hasn't been discovered yet. But it could be something as small as Pikachu hopping up on your shoulder when you've collected 10 candies with it as a buddy. So no, I don't think Ditto was the secret, there's definitely still a secret out there, Go look for it, but again, remember, it could be something small and insignificant. Now, my camera stopped recording before I evolved my Ammonite, so I'm just going to put that evolution up here and talk about it. I was hoping for Water Gun Hydro Pump because Omastar is the second strongest user of Water Gun Hydro Pump, and it's only weaker than... Who's the top? And it's only weaker than Starmie by half a percent, I think, so it's actually a really good Water-type Pokémon. Now, I ended up with Mudshot and Hydro Pump, which is still good because Mudshot is a fast move and it does have good DPS, 
but obviously it doesn't benefit from stab like water gun does. Now ground and water have overlapping type advantage against fire and rock, so this Omastar is still good against those types of Pokemon, and Mudshot is a better choice defensively because people might be using electric types against your Omastar, and in that case Mudshot would be super effective against those electric types. But if you're watching this channel, you won't be using electric types against Omastar because you know that. I would definitely recommend using grass types because Omastar has a double weakness to grass, and grass resists ground, just in case that Omastar has Mudshot in the gym. Here's a good question. Dude, you're only level 29? What do you do all day? It might seem like all I do is play Pokemon Go because that's all you ever see me do, but it actually takes a lot more than just playing the game to make these videos appear for you every day. It takes a minimum of six hours of work to make one video. That's assuming I play the game for two hours, that's time spent at the nest or out walking around doing whatever I'm doing for that video. That doesn't include travel time to and from the nest or whatever location I'm shooting at, essentially driving to and from work. That doesn't include the time that I spend doing research or planning for the episode, doing math if it's an episode about numbers, about calculations or stats, reading Reddit or other articles to find out what people already know about the topic, what information I can share with you, and then a minimum of four hours of just editing. You see a 20 minute video, but that video takes a lot more than 20 minutes to create. And beyond the six to eight hours that I spend just making a video every day, there's also the time that I spend on Twitter answering your questions, or reading comments and getting your feedback, or replying to emails. It takes more work than I think a lot of people realize to run a successful YouTube channel, especially when you insist on doing it all yourself like I do. So yeah, I could probably be a higher level if I spent more time playing the game and less time editing and managing this channel, but I feel that I've set the bar pretty high for Pokemon Go content on YouTube, and I'd like to continue raising it. That's probably going to be the last Pokemon Go related question for this Q&A. The rest of them are just kind of fun questions. So what shinies have I caught over all the Pokemon games? In my lifetime, I have only caught two shinies. One was a shiny Voltorb that I caught using chaining in Diamond and Pearl, and the other was a shiny Ghastly that I caught in a ROM hack that I was playing on my phone. I don't really spend a lot of time shiny hunting, but hopefully once Pokemon Go gets shiny Pokemon, I'll be able to catch a few more than that. Here is the last evolution of the bunch. It's Sandshrew, and it's gonna be my strongest Sandshrew that I've evolved so far, I think. Again, I'm hoping for Mudshot Earthquake. I do have one with the moveset, but it has sort of lower IVs. I think it's right around 80%. So I would like something with better IVs so that I'd be more comfortable powering it up. This game just doesn't want me to have the Sand Slash that I want. Overall, not great evolutions. I did get two movesets that I'm happy with. The rest of them are just kind of not. Have you ever been scared of vlogging in public? If so, how did you get over it? Yeah, definitely. I used to be really uncomfortable with it, and not even just in public. I used to be uncomfortable just talking to the camera in general. But like anything, the more you do it, the more you practice, the more comfortable you become with it. And when it comes to doing it in public, obviously there are people who are going to see that and think that it's weird that I'm talking to a camera, and it doesn't matter at all what those people think. I'm not doing it to get people to think that I'm cool walking around in public talking to a camera. I'm doing this to share information, to share my experience, to create something for you. And when you're committed to something, you do whatever you can to make it the best that it can be. It doesn't matter what people think of me in public. Their opinion, their judgment of what I'm doing isn't going to make these videos any better or any worse. So my responsibility is to be as confident as I can to make the best videos for you. Do you play any other games on console or PC? I really don't have time to play other games. Like I said earlier, most of my day is dedicated to running this channel. I do try to play League of Legends with my friends once in a while, and that happens maybe once a week. I'm also slowly playing through Pokemon Sun. I think I'm on my fourth, maybe fifth trial. So I'm slow rolling it through that. And recently, Cassie and I have been playing a browser, an HTML5 version of Gunbound, 
dragonbound.net for anyone who's interested. But those are just quick games. That's something we can do while a video's exporting or while I have a little bit of downtime. But that's actually been a lot of fun because we both used to play Gunbound when we were in high school, so it's kind of this nice throwback for us. But yeah, other than that, really not a lot of time for playing other games. And last question, what four things are on your Christmas wish list not Pokemon Go related? Well, there are actually only three things on my Christmas wish list, and it's a terrible list. This is actually the list that I sent to my sisters for Christmas. One, these Belossum socks from Pokemon Center. Two, a Theracane back massager. And three, refills for my razor. That's it. That's my Christmas list. I'm not really the type of person to want things. I don't spend a lot of money on things for myself. I don't really buy a lot of clothes for myself. I've been wearing the same pair of Vans since starting this channel. Most of the new clothes that I've gotten in the last year came from Cassie as gifts. Obviously I've done things like upgrade my phone or buy a drone, but that's all for the channel. That's all work related in some way. So for me, Christmas isn't so much about wanting things or getting new things. It's about spending time with my family. And before we end this episode, I do have another giveaway. I have these four pairs of socks from Pokemon Center in Japan. Squirtle, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and the ghosts. They all look pretty small actually, so these are probably kids size socks. Uh, size 22 to 24 centimeters. So to give you an idea, here's my foot. Here's the sock. Obviously much smaller. I'm size 9 by the way. But I think I'm going to give all of these socks away individually, so I'll choose four winners from the entries for this contest, and each of you will get one of these pairs of Pokemon socks. That's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot from it. I'll see you tomorrow.